What's going on everybody? My name is Aiden and welcome back to another video. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to be discussing a Chicago Bulls and Memphis Grizzlies game reaction as the Bulls fall in close competitive way in a close competitive way, I should say, to the Memphis Grizzlies. We had the lead for the majority of the game, but of course, as the reserves got in for both teams, Memphis ended up carrying out, pushing in for a comeback, and walking away with a win in Chicago territory. With that being said, there's still a lot of positives to take away from a game like this. I will go out on the limb here and say I enjoyed that game more than the Cleveland Cavaliers game, and in fact, I think we played better than we did against Cleveland. Now, that may not say much. It's still preseason. There's highs and lows. There's ups and downs. So let's discuss what I thought about the game in this video. Before we get any further, if you liked the video and you want to see more from me, feel free to drop a like, follow, and or subscribe if you are new. And let me know in the comments below your thoughts about the Chicago Bulls and your thoughts about the game, your player of the game, and just overall what's next for the Bulls as they continue their preseason run. Now, we did lose this game 124 to 121. Not the brightest thing you'll ever see in the world. But I said this before. I think we played better today. And how many ways did we play better? Well, first and foremost, big time stats from some big time players today. Uh, obviously, Zach Levine coming in with a 28 point performance. It was unbelievable in that first half of basketball. And then in the second half, you got the privilege to see the high flying Julian Phillips come in with the 21 point and 8 rebound performance in his own right. Those two players really stole the show in this timeout. But that wasn't it, ladies and gentlemen. Guys like Josh Giddy with 11.7 rebounds and 7 assists really brought, I guess, what he's all about to this game against Memphis. It was really, really nice play. Some highlight playmaking action. Some no-look passes in there. It was really nice to see. I've already said I'm going to really massively enjoy his rebounding. And that was a joy. And then obviously the 7 points on top of that is not too shabby. He also got two blocks in the game, so using his athleticism to his advantage. And then guys like Dale and Terry as well coming in and really proving a point as to why he should be playing for the Chicago Bulls. Now, that's what preseason is all about. You're coming in to make your statement. You're coming in to earn your minutes. And this is the perfect chance because you're going to see a lot of guys get minutes. And we did. We saw a couple of guys get some big minutes. Taylor and Horton Tucker came in and didn't do so badly. Dale and Terry is showing what he could bring to a Chicago Bulls team. With his defense, with his ability to play quick on the ball, with his ability to play make in his own right. It's quite interesting. And if he knocks down the three-point shot, we all know he could be a big threat off the bench. I th really think that's all he's missing at this point in time. Yeah, he can play a little bit more within the tempo. He can make the right decisions a little bit more. But if he can knock down the three, again, he's a completely different player, isn't he? But again, I'd love to see that. A couple of other guys in there. Io starting for the Chicago Bulls today because of Kobe White not being available to play. So again, you got to kind of see a different experiment with the starting lineup. Uh, obviously, probably not by intention. Of course, I think if Kobe White plays, Kobe White would probably start. But you get to see Io come in there. Io is the type of guy that you can put him in any situation. You can put him off the bench as the sixth man. You can put him in as a starter. You can make him a go-to guy in many ways in a certain game, and he can do the job. And he did do a good job in this time out. Seven points in the game. Um, two from four. A little bit stagnant, but ultimately... Uh, again, I was starting. That's kind of what I wanted to see. And I want to see more rotations and swapping arounds in the near future as well. Now, what did we see in this game that, I guess, caught, caught our eyes? Maybe caught my eyes. Well, the biggest standout for me is that we saw a small ball lineup here, ladies and gentlemen. This is due to the fact that Jalen Smith was unable to play in this game as well. You got to see six foot seven. Patrick Williams come in as the center for the Chicago Bulls. How, how do I feel about that? Look, there were some good moments in there. I think there was a time where Patrick Williams got a steal uh, on Eady, and he ended up um, getting a bucket out of it as well. There was a time where he got scored in the post. But... Again, we've already seen this song and dance before with the small ball situation, especially when we go really small like we did. When you're thinking of a small ball center, you're thinking of a six foot, maybe 10, six foot nine type of guy, maybe maybe six foot eight if he has the build for it, like a Draymond Green type of guy, whoever it is. I, I don't know. But ultimately, Patrick Williams, he has the build to be a very strong, capable player. 
I just don't think it really worked out that well. And ultimately, it's something I don't think we need to be seeing in the regular season. We do have a couple of guys that I think could do the job for us. Jalen Smith would be one of them when he's able to return. But even Adama Sonogu, I think you're better off giving him a chance as that six foot nine center that is dominant on the glass than giving Patrick Williams a chance at the small ball five. The only small ball five situation I would like to see is if we're trying to spread the floor which is what we did in this game against Memphis. And it did work in some occasions, but it's not something I want to see all the time. And I don't think Patrick Williams suits the center position. I don't think he should be anywhere near it. I think power forward is probably where he should be playing, maybe even a small forward from time to time. But again, Patrick Williams has been quite frustrating to watch these days. A lot of turnovers in this timeout. Um, didn't really do much on the scoring end. Very similar to the last game as well against Cleveland. Again, it's preseason, so I'm not going to go and overreact to anything, but you'd expect someone on a new contract to kind of really show why he's deserving of that new contract. Maybe game one of the regular seasons where it truly begins for Patrick Williams. You also have to keep in mind, he's been out for a while, so he's coming back into it, and of course, he might be rusty and stuff of that nature. So again, it's important to to really preach patience with Patrick Williams. Very similar to Lonzo Ball when he's going to be coming back. Stories about him suggesting he could come back within the last couple of games of the preseason, which would be quite nice. We'll wait and see. But yeah, um, it might take time for Pat, but he's been very disappointing in this preseason. Uh, but ultimately, yeah, that's about the game. I really enjoyed our three-point shooting this time out compared to last time. Our rebounding was a bit frustrating. I think Memphis won the offensive and defensive rebounding battle against the Bulls, which is very annoying. But that's just how the cookie crumbles. Memphis have a bigger team out there when Vucevic was gone. Vucevic only had five rebounds, by the way. So you'd expect better from him. But regardless, uh, when Vucevic is out of the lineup, we just don't have a big lineup out there. And Memphis dominated the glass. But we did play well for most of the game. I really loved how fast we played. I liked how the ball was moving and, 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 and you know, it wasn't stagnant. It wasn't slow. It felt like, again, a modern game of basketball. It's, it's fun to watch the, a modern game of basketball from the Bulls. We haven't seen it for so long, if ever, that when you start to see it a little bit now, yes, there are so many things we need to improve on. I still didn't necessarily like our defensive intensity and transition. It was better, but it wasn't great. And we gave up a lot of threes to the Memphis Grizzlies. Memphis were really shooting well from the three-point line. In fact, let's take a look at how many threes they actually made. They made, what was this? Uh, I think, is that, is that four? That's not 48 threes. That can't be right. Um, apparently, it's uh, that's attempts. They made 17 of them. There we go. That's right. And for the Bulls, we actually made more threes. But still, we gave up a lot. So that's an area of improvement. And... Yeah, overall, it's not, it wasn't the worst game to watch. I had a great time. And there is obviously key improvements there. But ultimately, I think this entire game in general was an improvement over Cleveland. So now the next goal is, can we improve from this Memphis game into our next preseason game? And that has to be the continuation. Apparently, there are a couple of injuries that happened. I'm not sure what's happened to Io. Hopefully, there's nothing serious going on there with any of the guys that got hurt in this game. But again, time will tell. With that being said, my player of the game is going to be Zach Levine. I really respect Julian Phillips' game, but I've got to be honest, he was minus 20 in the plus minus, and that was just, you know, of course it's not all due to him. And he did take some really bad shots out there, like really bad shots. When he got offensive rebounds, he was just trying to force things up in many ways. But then he also was high-flying. He was so fun to watch today, Julian Phillips, overall, in general, in the grand scheme of things. A 21-point and 8-rebound performance from Julian Phillips is something I'll take all day, every day, twice on a Sunday. Which it is for me today, by the way. And um, yeah, I loved it. But Zach Levine was just on a different level today. He didn't miss a three. Was highly efficient. He looked like he was having so much fun out there. He was smiling. He was getting involved. Obviously, he enjoys playing with guys like Josh Giddy, who gave him a couple of assists in there. A couple of catch and shoots as well. Which we've been imploring. We've been imploring Zach Levine to take more catch and shoots throughout the course of his career. There are many people in the comments section, every time I mention it, saying that he's never been a catch and shoot player and he never will be a catch and shoot player I don't know it's not for me to say that's up to Zach Levine whether or not he'll be a catch and shoot player or not but one thing is when he does take those catch and shoots he's really good at it and we saw it today and of course it's always nice to see a Zach Levine kind of create go crazy type of game 28 points and a half I mean I'll take that too he's my player of the game 101 in the preseason not the end of the world what do you guys think of the game thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one stay safe stay healthy and stay tuned for more Take care.
and peace.